Welcome to my office. That's my storage area. It doesn't have a roof or windows or a door, but that doesn't fucking matter. We're in the ends, shit happens. This is where the magic happens. Not in the bedroom, out here in the garden. Just gonna cook some nice food, make a salsa verde, grill off a steak, learn some tricks, sit down. I don't have to stand up because I'm not at work. So let's get shit popping. Today we're making this beautiful rolled ribeye steak that's a Aberdeen crossbreed all the way from Scotland that's 28 days hung and 52 weeks old. Um, so with that we're going to do a salsa verde which is essentially a whole load of chopped up herbs with some anchovy, some garlic, some Dijon mustard and some red wine vinegar. So the way we have to think about this recipe is that these different herbs bring us different flavour profiles, right? So, basil, sweetness, yummy, tarragon, aniseed, mint, freshness, zing, clean, and parsley. I don't like the word robust, but I'm gonna use the word robust and punchy and hard and integral. That's what they are. So, we're gonna do, I'd say, almost equal amounts. I'm gonna go basil heavy and parsley heavy and then we're gonna use the tarragon and the mint as little accents, little hums, a little bit of, oh, what's that? They're all gonna blow away in the wind, but this is what happens when you cook outside. Now the mint, we don't want the stalks. Stalks are chalky. I'm gonna take a bit, just for my dad, and I'm gonna stick it behind my ear, just as a little nod to the Cypriot madman that is my dad. And now you've got a whole load of different herbs, different flavors, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a sharp knife. Now it's important that your knife sharp because we don't wanna bruise these herbs. If you start to bruise these herbs, we're gonna leave all the flavor in our chopping board, right? But I'm gonna give it one roll, like a big spliff, and I'm just gonna chop it. So this is what the French call a chiffonade, which is a roll and chop. And I'm just gonna give this a rough chop. Now this is the safest way. So if you can't do the chiffonade at the beginning, just stick it all on a board and do this. And so look, this is the importance of a sharp knife. So if you look now, my board's got a slight tinge of green, but there's no moisture soaked into my board. If you use a, a blunt knife, you're bruising your herbs and you're gonna piss out all the moisture onto your board. That isn't what we want. So, into a bowl goes said herbs, right? Just like that. For the amount I'm doing, I'm gonna do one clove of garlic, not the biggest clove. Split it down the middle, and then in here, little green root. I like to take this bit out. So we're just gonna roughly chop this and turn it into a paste. And then to break this garlic down, we're going to add a little crack of salt, right? Said much, look. Yeah, one crack. Buy yourself some nice Malden salt uh, from the UK. The more money you put into your ingredients, the more love and attention you show, the better the end product's gonna be. So now, just gonna scrape this. That's what we're looking for, just a little bit of garlic paste. I know some of us buy jars of like garlic paste and ginger paste. For this, don't use that, yeah? Buy a bulb of garlic and mince up a clove. Those things are great for curries, they're great for other things, but not for this, yeah? So then we've got the hum of the garlic, that's gonna give us a raw harshness, yeah? So then we're gonna go with some beautiful anchovies. Let me just move this out of shot. Now, these anchovies, they're not like the, the shitty ones that your mum and dad gave you yeah, as a kid and was like, oh, I don't like anchovies, I don't want anchovies on my pizza. These are strictly for seasoning. There's a depth that you get from anchovies. There's a saltiness, there's like a little, what's that twang right here? Like when you eat, there's different flavour profiles in your mouth, right? So you taste like bitterness, sweetness, acidity, and anchovies is one of those umami flavours that hits you just there and you're like, oh, I can't put my finger on it. Nine times out of ten, anchovy. We're just going to chuck this anchovy up. Yeah, just paste this down. And again, this isn't like, I wouldn't advertise this as a sauce with anchovy in it. This is just like a little secret, a high bang flavour is our anchovy. That's gonna go into the herb. Now, we're gonna go 
Dijon mustard, right? Teaspoon of mustard goes in. We've got our herbs, our Dijon, our anchovy, and our garlic. We're gonna go capers. Uh, you can buy these sorted, you can buy these in brine, you can buy the little ones, you can buy the big ones. Doesn't really matter. Um, I'm gonna go, I'd say, two tablespoons of capers. No liquor, just the capers themselves. If you can't get capers and you've got cornichons or pickles knocking about, dice one of those up, stick it in. We're just looking for something that gives us an acid and a little bit of bite. So look, these capers, done, minced. Into our bowl. We're gonna add a little bit of red wine vinegar. Now, this is gonna help, one, keep the color, and two, season the whole thing. You can use lemon juice, you can use lime juice if you want. Italians would go red wine vinegar. So get yourself a nice bottle of red wine vinegar. And if you can't afford a nice bottle of red wine vinegar, buy a cheap one. There's some things you can scrimp on and there's some things you can't. I'm gonna take, I'd say that was about two tablespoons, right? So what you need to think about is we want this to be salty and acidic because we've got a really rich, fatty piece of beef. So this is gonna be like dangerously moist, pink, gushing juices and we want something that's going to hold up to the integrity of this piece of beef. So we've gone in with our red wine vinegar. I'm going to put in some good olive oil from Odyssey. Shout out Odyssey, my peoples. Good glug, yeah? Just like so. Now, you can always add, but you can't take away, yeah? So start slowly, build it. The one thing that we've all got and we need to utilise is a palate, yeah? Taste your fucking food, bruv. That's what makes you a better cook. So, I'm gonna give this a knock about. I can see already this is nowhere near enough olive oil, but I'd say the same amount of oil again, right? We've got that little bit of, so it's dropping in chunks, but we've still got the oil that's separate. If you do this in a food processor, blitz all of your herbs, your anchovy, your garlic, and your mustard, and your capers, take it out. Don't add your olive oil and your red wine vinegar whilst blitzing it because you'll just end up with like a clumpy ball of green shit. Acid, basil, parsley, little bit of caper back here. Done, doesn't need anything else. I like my salsa verde, it's quite acidic. Take it to where you want it. If that was two tablespoons, maybe go one and taste it. If it's not acidic enough for you, Go to the Hassan level, yeah? Cool. Now, green stuff's done. No one cares about that. You're all here for this, isn't it? This is a rolled ribeye, right? From Scotland. It's grazed around. It's eaten nice stuff. The farmer himself named it. It's had a good life. This didn't come vacuum sealed from a major superstore, yeah? Support your local dealers. Support your local butchers, your local fishmongers, and buy sustainable UK meat, right? Because, fuck the big guys, support the little mans, innit? So, I'm gonna go heavy, heavy on the salt. It needs to look like it's wearing a salt jacket. Heavy salt jacket, we're gonna flip it, and we're gonna do the same again. Whilst we've been making our salsa verde, our coal has been covered in the ash and it's trapped the heat. So I've just rejigged my coal. And what you want to be able to do is hold your hand about six inches above. I can't even do that. Hold your hand six inches above and you should be able to count to two, yeah? One, two. Quite fast, it's hot. Now, that means you can start cooking red meat, yeah? A three count, you're moving to chicken. A four count, you're moving like bigger cuts that you don't want to get loads of color on the top. And a one count, you're looking like vegetables and quick fish. So, easy two count. Let's take this beauty. I'm just gonna pick up the bits of salt that are remaining on the plate because once we drop this onto the grill, we're gonna lose that salt. Don't fucking touch it, bruv. Don't touch it. Just let it do its thing. It's not like mad intense and going mad. Just gonna let it color up. Get a nice bark on the bottom, a nice crispy crust. We're gonna turn her over and we're gonna make sure we rest it. Now, 
What I didn't say that was very important, I took this steak out about an hour ago, so it's up to room temperature. When it's room temperature, you see how this steak moves and it looks like a piece of meat, right? If that's, been in, if that's just come out of the fridge, I don't get that same feel. Now it's important that we can feel what raw meat feels like and then as we slowly start to grill and progress and understand it, we can touch that bit and be like, oh, that feels like raw steak because it is raw steak. The tougher it gets, the more it cooks. The idea is to get it to the right point or undercook it, rest it so it then relaxes. I know we've all heard chefs talk about relaxing and resting. It's very fucking important. All I'm looking for is once I've built a really good color crust on the bottom of my steak, I'm gonna turn it over. Now that for me works every time that I wanna eat something medium rare. If I was doing this to a medium or a medium well, I'd have less charcoal, so it'd be a free count. I'd spread my charcoal out and I'd cook it for longer. But now, we're there, you see it? Dancing fat, crispy bits. We're gonna go for the flip, right? So we're just gonna do, the same thing again. This point, at this point, it's very important. Touch this bit of steak, right? So now I've got the same amount of give that I had on the other side. What we need to look for is once this starts to firm up, yeah, and you're like, oh, that's changed. It feels different. That's when you're like, ah, oh, the other side's cooking. I understand it now, I get it. This thing, Rare, medium rare, medium, well done. Kind of works, but it's years of experience. I'd say rare, it was if you, just, if you just touched your hand like this, yeah? Medium rare, I'm not putting pressure on my finger and thumb. I've just put them together. That's your medium rare. Anything after that, fuck off. I don't want to teach you how to cook it like that because that's not how you should eat steak. But if you want to do medium, yeah, medium, well done. Yeah, fine, whatever, done. See these juices flowing? Our steak's starting to tighten up. Buff! Are you done? Shut up. Fuck off. Ready? So this steak's done, right? I've got these little bits of juices that are bleeding off. I've grilled off these little bits of fat that I'm going to leave on top to let it rest. Now, I rest steaks until they're room temperature, yeah? Now, you don't have to do that at home, but give it a long rest as possible. Let all the juices bleed out and you'll have a beautiful, beautiful steak. I'm looking forward to this. I'm actually, I'm actually looking forward to that. Steak's rested. Right, so it's been about six, seven minutes. Steak is out dripping. Don't get rid of this, yeah? This is beefy, salty, delicious, smoky liquid that we need to hold on to for flavor. Um, you're probably questioning why I didn't put pepper on my steak because the fire is so intense that we're gonna burn the pepper and get a bit in this. So I like to cook steaks with just salt and then pepper them after. So we're gonna carve this. Got a nice pink steak. It's gonna go on this beautiful plate. Now we're going with our pepper, yeah? Then this juice over the top, just like this, like a little gravy almost, yeah? Now we're gonna go salsa verde on the top, just like that. And I'm just gonna give it a little, hello, hi, my name's Hassan, and this is how to cook steak. It's the best part. It's the bit where you get to put it in your mouth. So here, got a lovely, look at that man, got a lovely bit of pink steak. And as you can see, if you watch this bottom bit here, we're gonna get a drip and you can see where it's meat juices and olive oil. That's the importance of the consistency of the salsa verde. Now, thanks. Let's get a nicer pink bit. 
done. Make this. Just make it. Thank me later. Italian classic, bro. Love and prosperity. Who job bless no man can crush, you get me? Come on.